Hi again, it's Celine again, this time from the kitchen. I decided to plug ourselves in and then just continue on with my Tumo story here. Because I still want to share my cards with you that have to do with what happens to the ego if you meditate in this manner as Sanskrit Blue uh, communicates to us. And what that does, you know, and how it links with the Tumo process. So where I was at was that actually I have to do a bit more than I realize. And also from my cards, I'm realizing that I have to do um, more with this realization that I'm actually stronger than I think I am, which I think applies to a lot of people. I um, can afford to have principles nowadays, which is, you know, quite special. Um it turns out I had those already and I just didn't realize it or didn't think it very subtle often real change in your life in my life I don't know what it's like for you but real change for me often has been very subtle where it is like an infinitesimal little uh, tweak to something or other and I suddenly notice that I have like enormous more space for myself or more space to act in or I act differently or things like that but the basic change inside me is very subtle if I just choose to you know one degree to this side or one degree to the other side and after a little while it has just opened up a completely new perspective. So I'm kind of hoping for that kind of thing to continue on happening. Um, this, all, this all has to do, this whole changing perspective thing has to do with Tumo in here. I feel that um, what I have noticed quite a bit with the Tumo energy is that a lot of the old... Um, there was actual physical support in my system from that I l used to lean on in in for example in communicating things in what type of ideas what type of what type of things I share on my channel used to be predetermined a lot more because it was kind of shored up my ideas and my thoughts and my words were kind of shored up on several sides by a volume that ended up containing a lot of toxins. Like physically your person is a body that has all this stuff that you carry around inside and it's actual physical stuff and with the Shakti energy going through there you get a massive detox going on and there's actual open space and it feels really weird <laughs> I hope I'm freaking some people out here <laughs> because it's really freaky you end up having like a sense of like vaguely paddling around you're a lot less I am less sure of things than I used to be whereas when I am sure of something I'm a lot more confident that that that's actually my truth my truth actually means something to me nowadays whereas it didn't used to you know it didn't I didn't used to so I'm using my channel I'm using you also to get at this type of a because if I put words to things it becomes real suddenly it just becomes something I can communicate something I can actually also um, being for me is talking about it so yeah so there you go so I'm really realizing a couple of these things that sound to me at least fairly small or minor you know but they have big consequences each time so yeah over to my next part here 
I was, I've been wondering before now, what would happen if your Shakti, what does, what happens to the Tumo energy once you're, you know, done here, when all this is sorted out? Is there a next step? What is the plan for, you know, because there's chakras above your head, uh, out of the body and so on and so forth. So what are you supposed to be doing with those? And I have made some progress with this so far. And in order to present to you what I've done, I have to talk first about a concept that I was introduced to a long time ago. Uh, well, I was working in a group of people who worked with the teachings of Sri Aurobindo. I haven't really read a lot of his works. We were doing other things at the time. So it wasn't really like a massive constant study group or anything like that at all. Um, or like we were constantly teaching each other or you know, getting lectures or things like that. It wasn't even like that. It was just that the um, some of the teachings were actually a support of the company in the way they worked. And I was part of that company for a short while. So I was introduced to those teachings, to some of those teachings. And I have kept some of those ideas um, sort of alive with me afterwards, after I left the the company and that line of work and all the rest of it. Um, I'm trying to think now of how I can present any more of this. It is not so easy to find on the internet. There's a couple of people who actually publish his works. Uh, he's done an immense amount of writing. He's, uh, he's an Indian yogi and he was very serious and he wasn't really a very popular figure, I think, except, you know, in his own circle. Um, it's not like one of the really well-known yogis who traveled to the West all the time and gave teachings and stuff and so on and so forth. He wasn't like that. He was a very serious man. He was also involved with a lot of politics uh, for a part of his life, at least. And he, he was an idealist and he was, you know, trying to um, change consciousness for the planet. And uh, he worked very hard for that. I'm, uh, you know... I know so and he built a community there's a lot of you can find all this stuff on online if you want um, it's a very special group I think also in the south of India that still carries uh, his legacy I think I still think there's quite uh, you know they're quite special people because of the level of commitment that they put into it not only him but a lot of other people uh, with him you know over a hundred years or so, they have uh, put a lot of work into this. So I'm thinking now that if I have to sort of stand here where I am uh, to communicate like a, an, a quintessential, to the extent that I can do this at all, a quintessential message that I got from, from him and from those people is, um, it has to do with spiritual surrender in the end. And surrender, there's like this massive, I've got a massive bumblebee that's bouncing in my in my door right there, <laughs> messing around. <laughs> so it's very distracting. So I was talking about surrender and here comes the bumblebee to, uh, you know, mess up my talk here. Um, if I try to explain what it is that I got from from those people and from those teachings, it is that there are other levels of consciousness. That consciousness is important, which is something I agree wholeheartedly to, you know. That it can be changed and shaped itself. That um, it's a lot of work and you do not always make a lot of progress, but it's still very much worth it. Um... And that you can benefit from acknowledging for yourself that you are a lot larger than your body and with its history. And your person is actually a lot more and a lot bigger than your body and its history. And or purple glasses or... 
uh, you know, mythology choices in terms of the conscious things that we acknowledge towards each other, even. The things... So I'm trying to say here that there are things that, are, that, that could be communicated that most people don't even think of communicating. But they're still part of us. And so we are this like this huge, huge figure and the body that you actually get to see and the talk that you hear and the, you know, ups and downs and all the rest of it, of the, of the life that we lead as people, you know, around here are only a very small part of this mega person, if you like. So that I learned and there were a couple of ideas that had to do with this whole surrender thing where you were invited to look at other dimen other dimensional if you like parts of consciousness that you can still connect to for example i'm going to grab an example here that has nothing to do with the teachings of the indian uh, philosophers at all but this is a crystal skull i hope you can make him out uh, maybe I should put something a bit darker behind him like so then you can see a bit more yeah now you can see him okay crystal skulls there's two of these in the house this one and a small one that I own I feel actually hold an identity each crystal skull can, it doesn't have to, but it can become like a person. And why that is so, I don't know. I know that if I compare the vibration of this guy and any number of uh, rock crystal, um, you know, crystals, quartz crystals that I have around the house, among themselves, in terms of vibration, they're very different. Each and every one is very different. And this is my husband's, this uh, this big guy here. And he used this one last week um, because I advised him to do so when he had a difficult, personal, very emotional conversation to handle with, uh, with a client of his. And he needed somebody, not just a crystal, but he needed somebody to remind him of, and that's the function of crystals that we carry around, I think, with us, is that it reminds us vibrationally of another part of ours. So this reminds him of like an eternal part of himself. Just as an example of a different level of consciousness that you can connect with if you let yourself and if that's your thing if you are busy getting your you know having getting your life together you may not have time or whatever maybe in 10 years time you find that this is totally your jam and you want nothing more than to have crystal skulls with you the whole time just an example um so lengthy introduction of a concept from Sri Aurobindo that is called the silent mind. The silent mind, I'm actually scared talking about this now because it's so hard to communicate. <laughs> it's, I've seen this and I'm allowed to talk about my personal experience with this, right? I do not want this to be a general idea of what it is because it's too big for that. It is like the next level of awareness from upwards if you like to see it that way, from our mental mind world that we live in a lot of the time. There is probably, I would tend to say nowadays, that if you look at our mind world around the world, and that's not the single elements and ideas that run around inside it, it is seen from the outside, it's like a layer of a specific part of the rainbow that we are, the blue colors, okay? The red colors are our bodies, the yellow and green colors are our bellies and our hearts, and the blue colors 
are in here, the mind colors, if you like. So if you go to this type of, if you look at it like a rainbow, the silent mind would be like a very high violet type of a vibration that we could still access from ourselves. You know, coming from here, you can still go to that place, if it were a place. And I've practiced this because I found it really useful because I love it that it, you know, I have so much chatter in my brain and I've always loved this idea that you could just go to this place in what is actually your own mind and open all those doors and windows wide and there is an existence and a brightness that comes into you that has no judgment in it, that's crucial, that has no preformed direction. And actually what happens for me is that all my inner chatter and all my inner um, turmoil, whatever it is, eventually subsides and surrenders, there's the word again, to this lightness of being, of being there. I can still be me without all the words, without all the thoughts. I'm still me. So I always thought that was really cool. And when I was in my tumo, going up into my tumo upwards area, kind of a process, a couple of weeks ago for the first time, I was reminded of this whole silent mind thing. So I, uh, because I haven't really interacted or done anything with that part uh, over the past couple of years, because I was busy with Tumo and other things, you know, in the child work and all that, where you need to hear the chatter. You need to know what's being said inside you. I think that's very important to know when to be silent and when to listen to the chatter. So, well, that's really, it's all relevant somehow. So what I did is I didn't even go into my crown chakra that much. I just invited, I had a quite a strong tumor field at that time. And I just sort of let it make contact with the silent mind. And I immediately, and also as I say it right now, get a sense of as if it were really a layer in here. And if I just go like this, I will contact it with my fingertips. And the sense comes into me. So there is a friendliness between Tumo as it has come through me and gone through all this work, you know, through me. It can actually come into this next level silent mind world and be friendly with it, which I thought was perfect and gorgeous to just sit in. And I just, I should let myself sit in this for a bit longer, you know, and I don't because I have stuff to do and I think it's all way more important and I just have to <laughs> keep running. Okay, so, so far, that's how, that's the level I was at. And this is when I got to this uh, severance spread. So now we're going to go to my cards, getting to my cards here, finally. Last chapter for today. I will actually manage to have this done. <laughs> so I'm so great, grateful that you're here because who would I have to talk to if it wasn't for you, huh? So the severance spread... Uh, there will also link again in this video, because two times better than none at all, is like a hexagonal uh, six-pointed star uh, spread with one card also in the middle, number one. And you have to go back to Sanskrit Blue, to Natalie's explanation, what the whole mythology for this uh, the, the background is, I'm calling it mythology now, I mean um, what the yoga is, what the technique, what the process is in this spread. This is not for pansies. It's hardcore. 
okay but i love me some hardcore tarot that's just the dig at dig at it because otherwise nothing happens is my conclusion so far it has to do the whole hexagon has to do with figuring out a part of in my case a part in myself that i can really leave behind and if i don't decide that i that i'm going to leave it behind i don't so this spread here is meant to help me do that and the first card in the middle is the card that is supposed to identify for me this one this is my french uh, tarot de besançon that i tried decided to use for this uh, operation here this is the hermit he's presented as a monk with a brown friar mantle and a staff and a lantern very classic hermity type figure so for me this means thinking of myself as a separate human being standing apart from people that idea has to go out the window and then the tool that will sort of chop my head off that will that's what natalie said not me <laughs> the tool that will get this done the tool that will re make me realize that i ha that i can actually afford to be done with the hermit oh i've seen so many her hermit cards i assume a lot of people have seen a lot of hermit cards over the recent uh, past you know oh boy the tool that chops my head off is the king of wands so i have to go to the ultimate length is what i what i'm seeing here of sovereignty i have to choose i have to make the right choice finally to um in order to manage to get rid of the hermit in order to convince myself i have to become this guy you know not a queen not a knight knight is in there by the way but at this point it is really the chopper offer is the king so do i want this or don't i want this that's the question the demon that i that needs feeding in the spread that is given in the spread hang on i have to check something funny uh, funniest thing of all i think the demon is justice so my desire this is also the sign the astrological sign of libra which is my ascendant um my need and my husband's need for equilibrium and um the capacity that there's always room to spare and energy to spare so that there's room for everybody that's justice in a way and this uh there's a huge deal of political correctness in this i never thought that i was going to manage to live without my political correctness but and i not, don't think it's going to happen in any time really soon but yeah <laughs> i kind of i kind of see where this is going for me and i think it's enormously entertaining that justice can actually be a demon so yeah so there's that one that's number three the number four card is the skull cup and it is what ends what you become in a way in my words um after your head has transformed its you know its nature into the positive version of it okay so my skull cup is the world which i think is really bloody awesome i have to think about this for a bit longer because it's kind of freaking me out especially what with the tumo and all the i don't know where this is all going you know <laughs> it's kind of when in the world if the world shows up i'm always going like whoa what are you expecting of me you know um what else did i write down here 
Oh yeah, I see this as the alchemical cauldron, the skull cup. I see as the alchemical cauldron where the actual transmutation of the old pain from the lack of justice or this part of my nature that comes out as a huge problem with always trying to be a people pleaser, being politically correct, being staying out of the blizzard, you know, trying to protect all the assets and things without being too much of a jerk and so on and so forth, transforming that into actual justice. Oh, you know, is, you know, there's a quantum leap there. The world I need to be my cauldron. Wow, that's huge. If I, I'm even getting excited now, you know, because it goes from impossibility where you are carrying the world on your shoulders like this Atlas figure, you know, and suddenly the world itself is the cauldron. I think that is pretty cool, by the way. So, yeah. Um, number five, let me think which one that was. I need to call in the demon by using the four of wands. The four of wands is like total presence to me. Is I looked up the astrological association and it is uh, Venus in Aries. It's like total presence, total actuality, total actually being in the moment there with people which i find nearly impossible to do always but this is the technique to transform justice into actual justice or rather to transform her into the ally that she's supposed to become which is the star oh is this an awesome spread or what is it just awesome so aquarius from Libra, who tries to stay out of the blizzard, to Aquarius, who doesn't care anymore what type of weather it is, who goes for, um, you know, real fairness and real, real, a real sense of what matters to everybody and real equality also. Aquarius is all about equality and, um, you know, individuality and sovereignty, personal sovereignty. Yay for that. And what's being integrated? The last seventh position here. Um, what is it that's being integrated into the wholeness? I get two cards. I had two. I did this all by feel out of my deck like this. I have my very trusted uh, Knight of Wands again and a Seven of Wands. And the astrological association for the Seven is Mars in Leo. And somehow um, it makes me feel that as I do this, my own Mars is in Cancer, by the way, so like, weep, like there. It's not the strongest position for Mars to be in at all. However, in Leo, I see a bit more of a sense of something that could be done. And because I am a Leo, it feels getting support like I get support if only I allow you know the victimization to fade away the aloneness the hermit right and the sense that I am different and I don't nothing that I say here applies to anybody and I'm just making videos for the heck of it and all that stuff you know if I do turn that around or if I do open a door from there to the world, then actual strength will also flow into me. And, you know, there's more that can be done. And I will be able to move forward like a knight of wands that I want to be. So that was my spread, my cards. I will have to put uh, some type of marker down in the description as to what happens where in this video. Um, I did more TUMO as a consequence or as a result 
of this um, of thinking about this subject matter of this whole willingness to sacrifice the ego to um, you know to when in the context of actual tumo of the actual tumo energy process if I go with my tumo out through my crown chakra actually directed it takes a little bit for the crown chakra to become activated because you just have to go there and sit there for a bit and then it's like hey okay we're something needs to be done here so let's go ahead and be active that's how it feels for me um my tumo can actually go my tumo energy can actually go out through my crown chakra and up there immediately it encounters another individuality which is made of light so whether this is the actual soul star chakra that i hear people talk about or whether it's an expression of the silent mind or some you know cross merger of those two i think it does it's very hard to communicate and it feels um, like a next step to what it feels like is when you afterwards sort of you just sit there with your tumo they communicate really easily they interface I don't know what it is that you would have called that and as I sit there I was sitting in my bath actually you know letting this happen all the field down here is affected in the most positive way possible by what's happening up there so anything of this nature of this spiritual nature that interacts with the tumo changes it again just like the dantians did that so how clever is that that the dantians were actually given to us in our bodies to transform this natural energy this earth energy basically that uh comes out of the earth you know into our bodies into something that can actually have a personhood in it it becomes who you really are i think and it feels awesome it feels like the most gorgeous silver rain inside you going down like that uh it's like light at the same time and it um, takes away all tension it's really smooth and it's full of beauty and it isn't really even intense anymore at that point it's just gorgeous just beautiful and bright and oh you know hallelujah vibes all the way all the way in so i think that's it i think that concludes my whole i actually did it oh you know <laughs> because what with the cards and the spread and the whole severance you see how this applies how the severance or the leaving behind of the identification that I had with my hermit here and I could say a lot more about that and how that's bugging me and how I how scared I get of people and still you know I'm not scared in the way that I used to be but I still think everybody else is out to get me <laughs> you know me and everybody else so yeah because we are raised with this idea that we're all predators or supposed to be predators are you a predator are you a an eagle a bird of prey you know sometimes i suppose we're just not one thing always we're sometimes we're predators and sometimes we're not sometimes we have to live off you know, if I chop up an onion here, I feel like a predator with respect to the onion or the potato. So there you go. There's a potato again. Thank you so much for watching this endless long uh, spiritual travail uh, story. 
I'm going to sit me outside in the sun a bit more because we have nice weather and uh, spring is here, you know, sort of. So that's twice half an hour. Hallelujah. Thank you again and see you next time. Okay. Ciao for now.